Hello, my name is Diana Garza and I'm going to be demonstrating NG tube insertions. Now, NG tubes are usually inserted for a couple of different reasons. One is for nutritional purposes, a patient that cannot uh, tolerate PO intake or is not taking in enough uh, PO intake. We also use it for irrigation, for evacuation of stomach contents, and for relief of uh, nausea and vomiting in patients who are having intractable uh, nausea and vomiting, issues postoperatively, and so on. Um, when you go to do this, uh, perform this task, it's always important that the first thing you should do is gather your supplies um, and also to talk to your patient. A patient who is informed as to why we're doing the procedure, the reasons for it, and uh, how long the procedure will be, will be more compliant in uh, uh, doing this procedure. It is something that you and the patient both will be interacting with, and if you all are both on the same page, then you're more likely to have a successful outcome. With the supplies that you will gather, we need lubricant, tape. Be careful with the tape that you get. Some patients do have allergies to plastic tape. There is paper tape or silk tape that are available. We need a cup with a straw. Hopefully your straw won't disappear on you like mine. Um, uh, sometimes you'll need a basin. We'll need a piston syringe, gloves, uh, NG tube. Usually for an adult, it's usually anywhere from uh, 12 to 14 is the sort of, uh, average size that we use, although there are larger sizes for different purposes. Um, always note on your documentation the size of the NG tube that you insert. We also need a uh, basin and a waste receptacle for any uh, emesis that may occur. Finally, you need a disposable chucks that you can use to prevent a uh, spillage onto the gown or on the patient. Okay, so after you've discussed with your patient the reason why we're doing this procedure, you're going to be assessing the patient. One of the things you're going to assess is which uh, nares is more open. You can ask the patient, they can probably tell you which side feels like their airway is moving, the air is moving better through. The reason why you want to choose the one that's more open, that's the one that's more likely to be straighter and it'll be easier for you to introduce the catheter. Now, with the NG tubes that we enter, use, if the patient already has a previous NG tube and had been dislodged, make sure that you change the location, that you uh, rotate which nara goes into. The reason that we do that is to prevent irritation to the mucous membranes and to the tissues. So, looking at my patient here, Mr. Smith, looks like his left side is a little more open, so this is the side that I will choose. The second step that you would want to do is you're going to make sure to measure the NG tube to see um, how far down you're going to put the NG tube. This measurement usually goes from the tip of the nose to the top of the ear going all the way down to the base of the xiphoid process. Uh, by measuring this you're more than likely going to hit right about the cardia of the stomach. I'm going to put my gloves on. Okay. So we have our NG tube and we're going to do the measurement. You're going to go basically from the base of the nose, tip of the nose, right there, to the top of the ear and going all the way down to the base of the xiphoid process. If you look on the NG tube, you're going to see these little black markings. Those are actually radiologic markers. When they do x-rays to check the placement, you, these markers will show up. Um, some people will use a uh, marker or a sharpie to mark these. I don't like to. I like to use a piece of tape for my marker. The reason being, sharpies can sometimes will wear off or rub off, especially if you use a lot of lubricant if there's a lot of secretions going on. Secondly, it's just messy and I don't like having messy things around my patient. Okay. Now, a lot of people ask me, is this a sterile procedure? This is not a sterile procedure. This is a clean procedure. You do not need to ma maintain sterile technique. With my patient ready to do this procedure, the first step that we're going to have them do is we're going to have them hyperextend their neck. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the pillow out of the way so that way we can have him uh, extend his neck in a more comfortable position. I'm going to show you what it looks like on the inside of a human being. 
when you're inserting the NG tube. A lot of misconception is, is that when you're inserting the NG tube is that you should go up. When in reality, if you look at the monitor or look at the model, you should aim downward. So that will go through, down the back of the pharynx, and into the esophagus. And of course, my model here is having little issues. There we go. And you do need to rotate to get it to insert. So as you see, when you go to insert this in a patient, make sure you're aiming down and towards the ear. That'll make it a little easier for it to insert. And now we're going to do that on the patient. Okay. Um, usually what I like to do when I'm taking care of a patient putting an NG tube, if they're willing to, I have an emesis basin or a large basin that I'll put on the bedside in front of the patient. Sometimes with the insertion, depending on what condition that they have, they can have a tendency to vomit. And you don't want them vomiting all over their sheets, all over themselves. And I don't know about you, but those little kidney basins are a little too small. Um, the other thing that I like to do is I like to take my tape and we're going to do a T-tape, which basically is you take about four to six inches of tape depending upon the patient and you're going to cut a piece and then you split it to about one third. But you split about two thirds down so you have two little tails hanging here and this is what we'll use to uh, fasten the NG tube to the patient. Some patients, depending upon their skin condition, can have dry skin, oily skin, they could have sweaty skin. Um, some people will use alcohol wipes to wipe the, the, top, the bridge of the nose and then dry it so that the tape will adhere better. I don't like to use alcohol. Alcohol is very drying to the skin. If you have somebody who's elderly or has immune compromise, they're more likely to have the skin break down. So what, if the skin looks like it is oily or whatever, I would use uh, just some soap and water, pat it dry, and go from there. All right. The other thing you may want to do with the patient, you're going to increase the, so they're sitting up a little more. So that way they're not quite so far down. All right, Mr. Smith, we're going to get ready to insert your NG tube. I'm going to move your pillow for you. It's always important to use a water-based lubricant when you're uh, inserting any uh, tube or device into the human body. Oil-based lubricants are very irritating to mucous membranes, and they're not much fun either. We've, if you look here, we've already got our marking here for our landmark. So you know how far down. Okay, now sir, we're going to start uh, inserting the NG tube. You're going to feel a very odd feeling in your nose. What I want you to do is take a deep breath in, breathe out, and I'm going to insert the NG tube. There you go. Now, as the NG tube hits to the back of the throat, they're going to start coughing. When they start coughing, you're going to flex the head forward and you're going to tell them to swallow. This is where you may have them have the cup of water and have them sip through a straw. By swallowing it increases the uh, reflex in the esophagus and as they swallow, when you feel them swallow, you can insert the tube a little farther down until it goes into the stomach. When you're inserting the NG tube there is a chance it may go down into the trachea. When that happens, the symptoms of that will be excessive coughing, they'll feel like they're choking, they'll turn a little bit uh, almost reddish, they can turn a little cyanotic. So if you see that, pull back on the NG tube until they can catch their breath, let them catch their breath a little bit, and then continue to insert, making sure to tell them to swallow. Okay? If you have a patient who is on fluid restrictions or on NPO, you may have to just actually physically tell them, okay, now swallow, 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 to get them to swallow. Once you reach your landmark, hopefully you and your patient are in a fine state of affairs and they're not, y'all aren't too tired. I like to go ahead and fasten down my tape and my NG tube. If you let go of this NG tube right now, it'll fall completely out of the nares. 
Now when you attach the tape, you put the piece that you cut the little tails in right across the bridge of the nose, okay? Then taking one side of the tape, you would wrap it in a spiral fashion around the nose. Then the other side of the tape will do the same. Like so. You take one more piece of tape to affix it to the bridge of the nose. Now, with your NG tube, you have a, the adapter, which will go into the base of the tube. Um, you can, if the patient is on suction, you would hook it up to your suction, like so. The blue vent is for air to vent out as you're suctioning. This does not have any medications going through it. And usually we'll have like an anti-reflux adapter that goes on top so that way gastric contents do not come out. If the patient is on medications or just on suctioning or uh, on receiving intermittent feedings, and this is not hooked up to suction all the time, what you can do, you can use the adapter to close the loop like that and the patient can be moved for transport, to go to different departments for procedures or for their comfort. As um, if the patient's tube is not connected again, you can also attach the tube to the gown with some tape and a safety pin. The cardinal way for you to find out if the NG tube is in the correct location is by x-ray. In some places though, while you're waiting for the x-ray machine to get there, you can have another nurse check by auscultation. And what you would do for auscultation You're going to check for an air bolus. This is what you would use the piston syringe for. You would put about 20 cc's of air in the syringe. You would insert that air into your NG tube. And having your other nurse with the stethoscope, you would listen underneath the left rib cage, toward just around the nipple line or a little bit over. As the air enters into the stomach, you should hear a whooshing sound as it goes through. Another way that you can check that you're in the stomach is to aspirate gastric contents. As you pull it back up, you should see fluid coming back in. Depending upon the patient's condition, it could be clear, yellow, brownish, may have clots, food, whatever may be in there depending upon their condition. Another way that is discussed in the book is using pH paper. Now gastric contents usually are about one to one to four on average. Respiratory contents will be about six on the pH paper. And what you would do is you would aspirate the contents, place it on your pH paper, and read the, the, read the amount. But as I said, the cardinal way for you to tell if the NG tube is in the correct place is by x-ray.